just like nature. It's what we're all about. Wagons ho! <laughs> Have a look at that! That's when they think it's safe to come out. Not an animal! Bang! <laughs> I guess in the end, that's probably why we all go fishing. Thank you very much, Ben. Beautiful flight across pristine ocean to Lord Howe Island. I'm back. Just like MacArthur, I did return. Welcome to the first of a two-part look at this magnificent act of nature, folks. Come along. It's going to be a great journey. And our journey starts here at our base on Lord Howe, the Pine Trees Resort Hotel. This famous guest house has been run by the same family for more than 100 years. This magnificent resort is perfectly positioned on the lagoon side of Lord Howe. It offers accommodation from comfortable motel style units to luxurious one bedroom suites and freestanding garden cottages. Now a few facts and figures folks. This natural world heritage site is located in the South Pacific Ocean, 700 kilometers northeast of Sydney. The main island measures 10 kilometres in length and is a little more than two kilometres wide. It is the eroded remnant of a large volcano which erupted from the seafloor intermittently for about 500,000 years, about 7 million years ago. It is dominated in the south by Mount Gower and Mount Lidgebird. Lord Howe Island has plenty to offer. From exploring the flora and fauna on the many bushwalks, to the sandy beaches and the exotic marine life. If that's not enough, there's tennis, golf, cycling, canoeing and climbing, just to name a few. But it's the fishing we're here for, folks, so come and meet an old mate of mine, Crom. <laughs> Good to see you, mate. Great to see you, mate. <laughs> Where have you been? Saw the plane land. I've been waiting. Mate, you can't drive a V8 with a cup of coffee, mate. A boy's got to have a little bit of sustenance. How do you reckon I'm travelling, mate? Rex, you look magnificent, <laughs> mate, for a man of your age. Yes. Folks at Lord Howe Island, there's one man who we put our trust in, and that's Gary Crombie. You also know him as two dogs from, can you believe, seven years ago, my old boy? Doesn't seem like more than seven minutes, mate. <laughs> what about the vista behind us, folks? I can't get enough of this, but we've got work to do for the folks out there all around the globe. What are we going to be up to? Rex, we've got very little time left to us this afternoon, mate. I'd like to duck around the corner there. Short run, see if we can find you some drama, bluefish, something like that. Have a bit of play, have some fun, eh? I've got an alternative suggestion. What's that? Why don't we go around the corner, have a bit of a play, have a look at some drama, some bluefish, have a bit of fun. I like your plan better. Thank you very much. It's great to be back with you on deck doing what you do best, and that's guiding and saying, there's a fish, Rexy. What do you got in mind for us today? Well, Rex, just over here, a little reef along the side of the island there. Nice bluefish drama sort of country. I think there might be a couple there for us today, so we're going to wander in that way. You up on the bow platform, cast the fly in towards the rocks for me, drift along, wait for the strike. Sounds easy, folks. But it might not be as easy as what Crom is sort of conveying to us here. And yet again, it might be. It's great to be back. And a bit of fly fishing. Always like to just dabble in one of my favourite sports. When you're ready, Crom. We're after them.
This is exciting, kids. You can do this at home for mullet and brim. Just use bread. Get, get a very, very good rapport going with your local bread shop and just have a lot of fun with bread because it's visual and you can see exactly what's happening. And I tell you what, it's a great learning curve. I'll pull my fly into there and, oh, yes, thank you. Oh, and he let go. Or perhaps I didn't hook up well enough. Now that's it. That is the one. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. <laughs> Come on. So you've seen the basics, is that Gary just burlies up the fish and we use artificial ingredients to fly fish. And that's all fly fishing is. Fly fishing's a bait, but it's an artificial bait, like rubbers or a metal lure or something like that. And a lot of people think that fly fishing's difficult. Well, you can see that it's not. And when you come out to these exotic places, and when I say exotic, it is difficult to get here and you've got to save your pennies to come out here. I tell you what, it makes it all worthwhile. Look at that drummer there. Come on. They are really good fighting fish. Come on, mate. Really good fighting fish. If I got you there, I have. Look at that. They're almost a cross between a sweep, a ludric, a zebra fish, and they are herbivorous. That means that they don't eat meat. And I can tell you now, folks, the people at Lord Howe, they found out at Government House last night that I certainly am not herbivorous. I'm sorry to the cow family. I made an indent in your population last night. That's nice fish. My goodness me, didn't he grab it, hey? Did he grab it? Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we're working perfectly here as a team, folks. Gary is skippering, he's decking, he's doing guiding the whole lot. So, this is just an absolute aquarium of fish here. There's blue fish and there's drummer and there's herring. And it looks like I've got a drummer. Come on, mate, up you come. Another drummer. And Gary's trick worked. Now, that is a very, very good example of what we're on about here. I'll see if I can lift that fish in. Yes. Now, that is a blue fish. That is a blue fish, and right there is danger. That is about as bad a gill raker as you can get. And you've got to understand that I've showed you, and I'll just let him go like that because I'm not prepared to get sliced up here because the next plane is now not out of here till tomorrow morning. So the gill rakers have to be really taken into consideration. But these are a beautiful, beautiful fish. I don't think we can pick it up with a camera, but my goodness me, they are one of, one of the best looking fish that you'd actually see in the sea. Have a look at that. He's a weed eater, and Gary, he set the trap. He's got the crust and the bread fly up the top, and the little bit of bread in the dropper, and he has been lipped absolutely beautifully. So, mate, look at the color change, and that is what they're doing, and, and I, I just didn't want to kiss that or handle it too much because, as I said, the gill rakers, they are absolutely lethal. 
This is a magnificent segment, folks. I'm enjoying it immensely because it just goes to show you don't have to go out of sight of the island to catch fish. They're right underneath your feet at Lord Howe Island. Take it. Take it. Ah! <laughs> He took it right on cue. <laughs> Come, ooh, ooh, my goodness me. <laughs> Come round to see Rexy Boy. Rexy Boy's done it again. It looks like a really nice bluey. It is a mate. nice bluey. He's a beaut. <laughs> oh, isn't he a pretty fish? Come on now. Come on. Don't let him get down to those rocks, Rex. Yep, Keep his mate, head up I'll put for a bit me. Of put as much pressure as I can on him. I don't know whether he's taken the back little light fly or he's taken the main one. I think he's actually taken the main one, so he's actually done us a favour. What a beautiful looking fish. Oh, gonna net him soon there for you, Crom. Oh, come on, mate. In you Just come. Easy, man. In you come. He's got some mates down there too, hasn't he? <laughs> Yes, look at that. That's a lovely bluey, Rex. That's the one we wanted, mate. That's the one for the picture. Oh, yeah, isn't it? Just absolutely lovely. Now, I explain later on about these particular fish, and you might be able to just put your uh, little two bobs worth in. What a beautiful fish. They are Gorilla Cyanier, his name is, technically speaking. He could almost be one of those wrestlers, couldn't he? He is very... <laughs> Sounds like a Japanese wrestler. He's a nice size fish, Crom. How big do they grow? Biggest I've seen four kilos, but three's a good fish, and you're starting yeah. to get up around the two kilo mark yeah, with this guy, maybe say, a bit he's bigger. Two kilo, yeah. Also yeah. spiky and nasty bits on them, as I mentioned yeah. before. Well, I'll just watch under there. around his gill covers there, and his belly's the and, safest. And his anal fin. Alright. Might a just see if he might just sit there for Brent and have a look. Changes colours a lot. Do you use that to his advantage and also for safety? Camouflage, yeah. Against yeah. the sand, he'll be a much paler blue. Against this sort of rock background, darker blue. Yeah. Sometimes look quite similar to the drama we were catching before, but these little orangey flecks on them are a dead giveaway. Drama yeah. will never have those. And the anal fin spikes, nasty stuff. Nasty's there. Even that hidden one there. And also, this is the gill raker you were warning me about mm. before we came on air. Just on the point here, really sharp, nasty gash, sort of open water wide gash and infects easily. Yeah. Not a good fish to handle in that respect. Yeah. They are very nice to eat. Weed fish and that sort of thing. I suppose it's like uh, Ludric and Drummer that you, as long as you clean them and get that black lining out of their uh, out of their gut cavity, you're in business. That's the trick. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry mate, nice that's why I put it down there. Okay, a bit of a kiss on the cheek and he can go over. Mate, nice. two dogs from. I tell you what, it's great to be back. <laughs> mate, he only broke what good finger I've got left. Got a bit more fishing to do in this particular uh, segment out here, but you just you never tire of this joint. This is actually home for you forever, isn't it? Well, this is my office, mate. It's also the place I've lived all my life, and it's just hey, what more could you ask for? Thanks for the invitation, and I'm sure that Crom and the rest of the folk here at Lord Howe extend to you a warm hand of come across, folks, and see what Australia's really about. This is one of them you haven't seen. Folks, late afternoon on Lord Howe Island. It is just magnificent, take it from me. You've seen enough about this island to know that it's got many unique features, and this is one of them. It's a wildlife sanctuary, both in the sea and on the shore. Tourism is very, very big here. There are ducks that have flown in from the mainland and each year add to their numbers. But we're here today to see what nature does at its very, very best. Yellowtail kingfish, yellow eye mullet, sea garfish, there's drummer, there's even likely to be some species that we don't know about. But every evening, the fish at Ned's Beach come in to feed. Still get that. Oh. The guy behind me has been doing this for over three decades. His name, Carter Simpson. And I reckon every fish in the Tasman would know him by his first name because just like clockwork and even daylight saving allowances, he's down here every afternoon 
and have a look at the fish. This is where man and nature can live together, and that's what it should be all about. Do your work, Carter. He's expecting rain. Here we go, the value of burley. Come on, the value of burley. You bring them in like that with little bits and just tease them, and what happens is you put a nice big chunk on the hook and have a look what happens. You watch this. And here he comes, bang. And what about your mate? Come on, come on, here you go. No, not you, mullet, this bloke, here. Come here, here, mate. Oh, gee, he's a big fish. And again, you blokes. Come on, off you go. Well, Gary Crombie has joined us after cleaning up the boat. Another successful day on the ocean. And this is a daily thing. I was hoping to catch up with Carter Simpson, but he's had to go back and get more food, apparently. <laughs> How long has this been going on, the fish feeding at Ned's Beach? Probably 30, 40 years, Rex. Man. It is amazing that these fish just couldn't rely on scraps of bread and your leftover bait and things from your bakery and that sort of thing. These are wild animals with an instinct. They are. They come here, they get tuned on to this sort of thing. Some fish are resident here relying on the food from tourists feeding them all day. Other things like the big kings and the like, they know when carters coming in in the evening, they schedule their day around coming here for a bit of a top up at the end of the day. Well, folks, it's a magnificent occurrence and it's one of the must for the tourism sector out here on Lord Howe Island. And I know that we go to 166 countries of the world and I know that Kevin Cosner is watching. And Kevin, <laughs> you want to be nervous, son because Rex and Two Dogs is the sequel to Dancing with Wolves, mate. And we're gonna kill them, aren't we? We're gonna make a box office smash. Mate, Rex. we're gonna take some scalps. Quack, quack. Folks, I'm a great fan of Sir David Attenborough. I didn't know he had another brother beside the acting one. Have a look at this bloke. Hey, mate, you fair him? <laughs> Absolutely magnificent blokes, I tell you what, yibbida yibbida, that's all. And folks, every now and again it's sad when I've got to say I don't want to leave this place to go back and broadcast the footy in Melbourne, but Lord Howe just grows on you and you want to come back to see what I mean. This is a great example of man and nature working together. We couldn't have come out here without the assistance of Quattislink, the board of Lord Howe Island, Thank you very much, one and all. And of course, the Crombies. They have been absolutely magnificent. And if you get a chance to sample the cheesecake at Pine Trees, you'll see what I mean. Until we meet again in the wonderful world of fishing somewhere, hopefully Lord Howe, I'm Rex Hunt, and good fishing to you all.